So now that we know a little bit more about symbols, why would we use them and why wouldn't we use them? What are the pros and cons? So one of the big advantages of symbols is that they form a very strong and stable pattern. And this pattern is not very easily disrupted by anything. Um, so it is very much like a, like a skeleton, like a framework which you're putting in place. Um, but like with any reconstruction, if you yeah, put in a new skeleton or a new framework, um, yeah, it might be in the way of some older construction. So what I've seen a lot, especially with uh, Reiki initiations where people use symbols to perform the initiation, is that often the new yeah, Reiki channels will actually cut through pre-existing energy channels. So sometimes people will lose certain paranormal talents or might damage their health actually by an um, yeah, improper initiation. So the stability is both um, an advantage and a disadvantage. So the nice thing of symbols is that they tend not to run out of power. Uh, the only thing they need to manifest themselves is that there is something to imprint themselves on. So as long as somebody is watching it, touching it, paying attention to it, it will work. And if a person is ignoring it or not looking at it or something like that, it yeah, will basically be dormant. The thing with the symbol is that um, ultimately it can't adapt. So you, in a way, when you create it, it is in a very specific form, in a very specific state. And even though circumstances might change, the state of the symbol doesn't yeah, evolve along with it. So, um, in a way, it is very rigid. And this can also be a problem, especially if you use it for healing. Um, for instance, a person might have um, a problem with some organ which is not functioning well. Um, you put a symbol in place, so the energy will move differently, so the organ will behave differently, and that's fine. But also that organ will have lost some of its flexibility, because it's, the spirit cannot override the symbol, so therefore also the spirit cannot change how the organ will work or react. And in a way, if the spirit has lost control anyway, it's a way of, yeah, in a way, uh, compensating uh, for that loss. In the same way, like a person who has lost an arm or a leg can be given an artificial limb. So the limb is not as flexible, not as reactive as the original, but it allows the person to continue going and to continue doing things which would otherwise be impossible. So in such a case, a symbol is very good to use also for healing purposes. But if the spirit itself is willing and capable of doing it, well then that's the better solution to strengthen the spirit, to train the spirit, to take care of its own energy body. Um, so a spirit can, uh, a symbol can be used as a curse or as a blessing. So as a curse, it, yeah, it will basically drive a person or a person's energy in a certain state or push it in a certain direction. And of course the spirit can fight it and by fighting it can compensate for it. But as soon as the spirit in a way tires or weakens, then the symbol will reassert itself. And this can be a very powerful uh, curse. On the other hand, it can also be a very powerful blessing. So the person can be um, changed by the use of symbols to connect them with a power source, such as a healing energy like Reiki, but also a certain deity, um, a tradition or an egregore are possible sources. And while this symbol exists um, within them, 
that connection will also try to reassert itself or to re try to recreate itself. So this is also a way in which a blessing can be done. So a symbol is a very versatile tool, but also a very powerful tool. And because it exists on a level which is higher than that of the individual spirit, um, you should be very aware that if you do something with a symbol, or you apply it to a person, that person's spirit cannot compensate for it, it cannot control the symbol, the symbol will be controlling them. So if you don't need it, don't use it. And personally I try to avoid the use of symbols, if possible, or only use them in a very um, localized and very short term. So the imprint will be, for instance, in a specific place. You use the symbols to create a ritual space, for instance. Um, the person can go into that space, enjoy the energies the way they are. The ritual space will be much more stable because of your use of symbols, because no matter what happens in the space, the space will tend to reform itself according to the symbols. And once the ritual is done, the person can leave, can step out of it and leave the symbol behind. And they will have enjoyed the power of the symbol, the stability of the symbol, without being limited by it. So in the same way also symbols can be used to make amulets or talismans to attract powers or to ward against certain powers. And these talismans can be worn and they can also be taken off. So a powerful tool and a very versatile tool. Um, besides making symbols yourself, if you have knowledge of a symbol, um, you can also perform a blessing on an object which has the right form or shape. So one thing I've done is I've designed symbols. I've asked a jeweler to make that symbol into uh, an object to sculpt it. And then this sculpted object I connect with the energy of the symbol. Because before the initiation it is just an object. Even though it has the shape of a symbol, it isn't. Because ultimately there are energies and dimensions missing. And by joining in a way the energy of the symbol with the physical manifestation of the symbol, the symbol becomes activated and it starts to work energetically and to manifest itself according to the dimensions it exists in and also according to the materials which are yeah, carrying its energy and radiating it out on our plane of existence. It's the same as for a mantra or a prayer. A prayer can exist on paper or in the vibration of a voice. But that doesn't give it any power. The power is ultimately in the person who speaks it with understanding, with surrender, in connection with the divine. So praying while being in a very low state of consciousness tends not to work very well. Of course, it, your prayer might be picked up by higher beings, answered by higher beings. But if you can pray while being in contact with the Divine yourself, then that prayer can manifest, higher powers can manifest symbols, so things will come to pass as a result of your prayer. And of course it's even better if there's multiple channels, because we as human beings exist in a very low number of dimensions, so we're not very good at manifesting symbols by ourselves. But if you can get the group together of like eight people, ten people, and each of them has their own little vibrations and dimensions they can connect to, and you pray together, you join it, then the symbol, which is inherent within the prayer or within the mantra, gains a lot of power and can really have a much stronger effect upon the person or upon the place. So, 
I hope that these practical tips will uh, help you to work with symbols in a better way. Thank you for listening and I hope you will join me for another lesson.